Who doesn't love a good web scale meme? If you didn't see this tweet, not too many of you did, to the point where I probably shouldn't be making a whole video on it, but I have opinions, I have feelings, we're gonna do it. So Zieg, the CEO of Sentry, also a friend of mine, made a pretty funny tweet here where he posted a screenshot from the Next.js and Vercel database documentation where they show this interesting endpoint, pages slash API slash create pets table dot TS. And in here, we have a next API request and response. And when you hit this endpoint, we're actually creating a table in the database directly. So the way that Vercel was implicitly recommending we do this was a bit weird because instead of running the SQL command on the actual database, they have you call it via their SQL tag and then run it locally and then post this endpoint to trigger it. Kind of silly sounding, but there's a few reasons why I think this is this way. I can't see the old version because they've since changed it, but my guess is that the slash app version wasn't just an endpoint you hit, it was a server action. I say that because I do this. And I know I'm gonna get made fun of a whole bunch here. Why would you ever do this? Why would you make an endpoint to do something as simple as a database migration? Isn't that super insecure? Isn't that terrible? Why would you ever do this? Because you've been dunking on this a lot and I understand why. So hear me out for a second because I'm gonna do my best to defend this one. You've already probably heard about today's sponsor, Savala. These guys are the easiest way to deploy anything. Instead of just talking about all the stuff they do, I want to focus on one cool thing that I just learned that they do that is making them one of my favorite ways to do databases, even when I'm not using them for the services. Their database studio is so cool. <laughs> they always let you host databases, but now you can actually play with them in the browser without having to set a bunch of stuff up on your own end. I went and generated some SQL to create test tables so I could show this off. And you literally paste it in, I can click run all, or I can go through and click play on each of the different SQL statements that it formats and understands correctly. I could even prettify it with one click. If I click run all, it now goes through and runs all of these things that I just wrote here. And now if we hop back and we look at the tables, we see I have my orders and my users tables that were both created and filled with a bunch of data when I did that. This is one of those tools that you don't realize is essential to your life until you have it. Even now when I was setting it up, I screwed up the SQL initially and I needed to drop the table. I could go in the SQL console and write it, but I could click here and click drop instead. It's so nice to be able to just interface with your database as you're setting things up. And if you're spinning up a lot of different services or applications or trying out different tech stacks, having a database studio that can keep up with you helps a ton. If that's all Savala did, it would be worth it. But the fact that they offer full hosting with templates for every framework and tool you'd ever want to use, one of the best dashboards I've ever used for managing all of this, a truly Vercel-like experience for hosting with servers, including all of the CDN crap you'd normally need to set up yourself, it's an incredible service. I'm really happy with it. I have a feeling you guys will be too. If you check them out today, you'll get $50 of credit for free at soydev.link slash Savala. This is a project that I built for my talk at Render ATL. The talk was abusing Next for fun and profit. I rotated between using Next for funny things you probably didn't expect and then showing how they could actually be useful. Apparently Prime tweeted the Next app router version and this is admittedly harder for me to defend, but I'm gonna show the semi different version that I actually do support and think is kind of cool. So we're gonna go to my page here named data. This is a bit chaotic even for me. This project here is a seemingly normal Next project. In API slash app, I'm serving an Angular app out of my Next app because I thought it would be funny. I bet it even still works. Um, it does. Look at that. I even have interactivity in Angular inside of my Next app. Totally normal, right? Yeah, the, the point of this part was to demonstrate how powerful API routes are that you don't just have to serve and receive JSON. You can do other things with it, which is fun. But the more interesting thing I did was the slash bash route. So the demonstration I gave, as hilarious and absurd as this sounds, is how to migrate a Mongo database to SQLite. I actually might have done the other way where I mig migrated the SQLite to Mongo. I don't remember which I did. Regardless, I'm gonna show how I did it because I actually think this showcases why doing this type of thing in Next is fun and also kind of reasonable. So we've all had to write crappy bash scripts before to do weird things. And we've all probably even tried writing CLIs where we could have custom inputs and like step through the thing instead of it running all at once. Writing good UIs for your CLI is hard. That's just a fact. And writing good CLIs in a way that everyone can consume them and understand them, 
that's even harder. But if you can use another thing to build a UI around that CLI, interfacing with it, stepping through it, debugging and understanding it can be a lot easier. And if you want to run things in different orders, you can. And that was the point of this demo. I do a couple of fun things here. The big thing here is I have my legacy database and I have my Mongo database. Both of these are use server calls. These are effectively endpoints that you can hit via the UI. In this one, I grab all of the values out of my legacy DB and I set them to content, which by the way, this runs on the server and my server is my local instance. So now when I click this button to get contents of legacy DB and then it sets that value and it revalidates the path, it's gonna do something interesting. So yeah, that's the first button, which is run server code. 999 rows. How does it know that? What are those rows? What is happening here? Well, if we scroll up here, we'll see since content is this thing that just exists here and I just set it to a different value and then re-rendered the page with new HTML. If no content return null, otherwise we return content as any dot length rows. So this is using the server code in this server variable that has all of my rows for my database and it renders it. But if I want to access it, I can too. If I go in the browser now, I have in my console a fully interactive ability to window.content, if I can spell. Oh, this one I have to refresh for, I forgot about that. One quirk, cool. And now the server is generating this with this script tag here that I'm dangerously setting to make this a variable that I can access. That's really cool. The fact that I can use a server action to change the state of this data on the server and then use a quick script tag hack so I can play with it in my interactive CLI to do things with it, that's actually really cool. Which means if I'm doing something like I am here with this database migration, I can make sure I have the data that I expect and that it's coming through here the way I want it to. This is all randomly generated. I'm not doxing people, don't worry. I can make sure it's all formatted how I expect. And then I could run my move data to Mongo function here, which again, just happens because I click the button that is bound button type equals submit form action equals move data to Mongo. It's that easy for me to write a JavaScript function that does something on the server side that might be intense. It might be heavy. It might be something I did with, I don't know, writing a bash script before, but now I can step through it. I can run the server code. I can validate the outputs. I can run my move data to Mongo function. It's like, God, I do not want to know how to connect to Mongo via bash or the CLI. I would only ever bother dealing with Mongo stuff through JavaScript and TypeScript. So now I can. const mongo client equals await get mongo. Results is await mongo client dot collection dot insert many run migration. And if we look at my terminal, look at that. It ran it. It has way more items because I already had done this once. So now it has 2,000 items instead of 1,000. But it's that easy to do. And if I wanted to delete things, I can do that here instead too. So if I change this from insert many to delete many, not even going to put a filter. We're just going to see what happens if I don't. And now there's no rows at all. <laughs> Gotta love Mongo and its lack of specificity. But it's actually really nice to be able to this easily, run that, have the data, then run the migration and see the result. I, I will defend this. The ability to quickly build a UI for complex and scary workflows and things like here, I even have that select call using like SQL directly like that. It is actually really fucking nice to be able to quickly build a UI for this type of thing and step through it and pause to see results and work with. I understand just exposing this as an endpoint is scary, especially if you're under the assumption that somebody's gonna ship this like this, but they do not write these docs with the assumption people would ship this. They wrote these docs as a way to help people get set up without having to leave the code base they're in. And a hard reality to accept, this is a hard one for me as well, is that the best tool isn't the one that is most perfectly tailored for the task you're completing. It's the one that can complete the task you're trying to complete that you already understand the best. The less you have to relearn and change the way you do things, the more likely you are to complete the task. And if I'm already spending my whole day in Next.js TypeScript projects, relearning the quirks of Bash, figuring out how the fuck to interface with Bash and SQL and Mongo together, dealing with the weird states between all of that, and not knowing until it's done if it worked, that sucks. Or I can lean into the fact that I know Next well enough 
to do these types of admittedly silly things. And I'm not saying every Next.js knows it well enough to do this stuff right. There are a lot of quirks and gotchas and things like the fact that this window.content doesn't run when it gets updated. And the only way to make this run is to refresh the page. That's a silly quirk. Most people won't know, but that's fine because I do. And it lets me ship faster and in ways that I better understand. I'm not saying this is for everyone. I'm not even saying this is for anyone. <laughs> I'm just saying you might be surprised at how convenient it is to use the tool you already know well as a way to build an interface on top of a thing that you don't know that well yet. It's actually a really nice method to start experimenting with things that you might not be familiar with. Like me, I don't know fucking jack shit about Mongo. I haven't touched it since 2010. Being able to play with it in this way is a huge relief. And I feel like I'm taking advantage of my knowledge and my understanding of how these tools work to wet my feet in this thing I don't understand that much yet. And someone in chat just made a really good point. PHP devs have been doing this for years. Yep, PHP devs have used PHP to do shit like this literally forever. In fact, if you Google search how to port PSQL dump to MySQL, the result, the script that people recommend to populate a MySQL database from a Postgres dump file, which I totally haven't had to do before, the script you use is a PHP script. Yeah. Like if you're trying to move your Postgres to MySQL because you want your Postgres to scale, there's a PHP script for you. And I knew that was the recommendation because it has been for a decade plus now. But when the JavaScript devs do it, we make fun of them. I don't get it. Especially because I know Kramer in particular here is quite pro PHP and the Laravel guys. To not realize this is the exact same thing is almost funny to me. So yeah, while I don't defend making this an endpoint you have to hit, the idea of using the tools you're already using to build interfaces on top of things that you don't know that well or that you might be a little scared of doing is awesome. And if I had done this instead in Bash, the likelihood of me making a mistake, the likelihood of me not even seeing the uh, mistake, much less knowing how to debug it, all of that's much higher than if I take advantage of the tools I already use as a way to dip my feet in this thing I'm less familiar with. And then my CTO says in chat, but if I make numbered endpoints, I can use them for DB migrations. <sighs> Until next time, peace nerds.